making my homemade hard apple cider. Uh, with the hard apple cider, you can do it a few ways. Uh, you have a very simple way. As you can see, you're using pre-squeezed uh, apple juice. So everything, all that work is pretty much done for you. Or if you want to go for the more organic, you know, really be kind of creative and have your own mark on the flavor of your cider, you can certainly go on down to your local uh, farm, uh, your local farmer's market, pick up all the, uh, the fresh apples that you want. And if you've got a, uh, a fruit press, cut that up, press out all those juices, you definitely get a very distinct cider flavor. You get to mix your own apples and kind of, do, you know, kind of build it that way if you want. I don't have that around where I live. I don't have a, a fruit press, so I'm kind of limited to just using the apple juice that I have on hand. So I'll pick different apple juices and I'll mix those together, kind of the same effect. Um, not quite as, as fun as doing it yourself, pressing your own apples, but still just as effective. So what I'm looking at here is I've got basically Mott's 100% apple juice. Um, this one, no sugar added. This sits at a 1052 starting gravity just as its own with your apple juice. Um, one key thing when picking your apple juice, you want to make sure that it is 100%. It does not contain any preservatives. Uh, preservatives meaning like your potassium sorbates, for instance, so that it won't start fermenting on the shelf. If it has that, obviously if it's not going to ferment on the shelf, it's not going to ferment in your fermenter. So avoid those types of uh, apple juices. They may taste great, but if they've got preservatives, they're not going to be good for creating a hard cider. So, like I said, you 1052 is the starting gravity. That's important to know because you want to kind of figure out what your final alcohol level is going to be. Also, what your flavor profile is going to be. With the 1052, there's certainly enough sugar in the apple, thaw, or apple juice to go ahead and start fermenting just straight from the apple juice. Add in maybe some flavor pairings if I wanted to, like the cinnamon I have here. But that's going to end up leaving you with a very dry, very crisp, maybe even tart um, apple cider which for me personally, that's not what I care for. I don't like it. I kind of try and design mine to go a little more like an apple pie in a glass with a little bit of that alcohol to kick you in the tail. So <clears throat> what I do is I end up adding sugar to mine. I add a nice brown sugar, not all of this of course, it's seven pounds, but I'm going to add that to get my final gravity up to right around 1070 to 1080 depending on where, you know, which, how much alcohol you want. I find that gives me enough alcohol to get that 6% or better drink that you want and then still leave that residual sweetness behind that lets you know it's an apple cider, it's not an apple champagne. So anyway, that's just my personal profile. You can suit your recipe to however you like. One of the other things I like to add, it's also fermentable, but I also like to add in there for the flavor is molasses. I love the flavor. Again, kind of going with that apple pie type flavoring. I've got some fresh broken cinnamon bark uh, right there, the cinnamon stick. So I'll break that up a little bit more into a few more chunks before I add those in. I have some whole cloves. I also have some freshly ground nutmeg and just a little pinch of freshly ground ginger. So that's the basic ingredients right there uh, for making my hard apple cider. So the process now. We're going to start off, I've got a gallon of water. We're going to put that into the pot, get that up to a boil. I'm going to add in my sugar, boil the sugar, sterilize that, break that down. I'm also going to add in the cinnamon, the cloves, the nutmeg and ginger, all of those ingredients together um, uh, with the molasses as well. I'm going to add all those into the water and boil those to kind of get almost like an extract. That's going to be my really strong uh, flavor profile that's going to be added to the apple juice. Now again, like I said, this apple juice is already pre-pasteurized, it's been made to sit on the shelf, so I don't have to sterilize this apple juice. I can take it straight from the bottle and pour it right into my wart. I would sanitize the outside of your bottle before you open it, just to be cautious because sanitation is key. But you can go straight from the bottle right into the fermenter because it is pre-pasteurized. There shouldn't be any, you know, hicks living in there that are going to mess up with your yeast. Now I've got four gallons or so of that in the fridge. That's going to be nice and cold. So I kind of use that as my wort chiller. So after this gallon is done boiling with all the sugars and it's hot, I will start adding that apple juice into there and that'll drop my temperature rapidly. I'll get my final volume. And then I'm going to pitch a yeast. I use, uh, I, some people can use champagne yeast or wine yeast for their ciders. 
if you're going for an extremely high alcohol and you want that really dry, tart, or crisp type apple cider, absolutely, that's the way I would go. I'm, again, I don't care for that style, so I'm not going that way. I'm using uh, US05 dry yeast because it is very aggressive. It's able to handle high alcohol levels in the 1070, 1080 range without any problem. And it leaves a very neutral type uh, flavor profile behind with the yeast. It doesn't give you really strong uh, fruity flavors or strong hoppiness flavors, anything like that to your yeast. It, pretty neutral. Um, so it gives you a nice clean fermentation. So that's one of my, my favorite dry yeasts to use is the Safal US05. Um, you can use the US1056, uh, they're pretty much the same yeast anyway, uh, if you wanted to. Or White Labs, I think it's LP01, double one I think is, is their version of it. So that's pretty much it right there. Now I'm going to start measuring some stuff out and get the water boiling and start the Okay, so now I'm adding in the brown sugar to my one gallon of water that I brought to a boil. Um, key thing to remember, I turn the heat off. You do not want the sugar to sink to the bottom because it doesn't dissolve instantly. Um, it does dissolve quick, but not instantly. And if you've got the heat on, when you dump that in there, then it's going to uh, end up sticking to the bottom, caramelizing and burning and giving you an off flavor that you may not be expecting. So. Just remember, turn that flame off. Once you don't feel any more of the sugar in the bottom of your pot as you're stirring it around, then uh, go ahead and turn your heat back on and bring it back up to a boil and then add in the other um, additional flavor addings, your cinnamon, nutmeg, um, and so on. Also, I'm getting ready to add the molasses. I do the same thing. I add the molasses when the heat is off. All right, so we're now done with everything for the brew. I've got everything in the fermenter. I took the one gallon of water. I filtered out all of the uh, cinnamon and little bits of clover and whatnot. And then I added the four gallons of ice cold apple juice. And that pretty much brought the temperature right down to pitching temp at about 70 degrees. I rehydrated my US05 uh, in about 800 milliliters of water. And then I added it, pitched it into here. And we're now good to go. So uh, good luck with yours and enjoy your brew.